fantastic. Well, it's my privilege to share with you, and I do pray and believe that what I'm going to share with you is going to impact you, not because I'm sharing it, but because it's from God's Word, and normally that does help. Oh, I've got some water. That's even better. Fantastic. Well, we're going to jump right in. We're going to read out of the book of Luke, Luke chapter 8. I love the book of Luke. Luke and Acts are possibly my two favorite books in the Bible, but I possibly do actually say that about every book in the Bible. They're all my favorites. <laughs> but I do love the book of Luke and, Luke and the book of Acts as well. And so here Jesus is walking. It says, it, says, it, says, it says, after this, Jesus traveled from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. Let's just stop there right now. We are in a world right now that is inundated with bad news. I mean, there is bad news everywhere. There's so much bad news. And we need to make sure that we're proclaiming the good news. Because the reality is that we are the only ones that have good news. We have the good news. We don't just have some good news. We have the good news. And so we need to make sure that what we are proclaiming, because we are proclaiming, that what we are proclaiming as leaders is good news news. Good news. Good news about Jesus. Good news about what he wants to do in our lives, what he, he's got for our futures. The world seems to be hopeless, but we have hope. We have faith. Like what Pastor Dina says, we have sight into the future. And we know with God, the future is good. It's good. We have good news of the kingdom of God. The 12 were with him, and also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had come out. Jonah, the wife of Chusa, the manager of Herod's household. Susanna and many others. These women were helping to support them out of their own means. While a large crowd was gathering and people were coming to Jesus from town after town, he told them, he told them this parable. A father went out, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell on the path, and it was trampled on, and the birds ate it. Some fell on the rocky ground, and when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop a hundred times more than it was sown. Now, I'm not a farmer. When I was younger, I wanted to be a farmer. There's still a part of me that wants to be a farmer. <laughs> but to get a hundred fold of what we sow, that is supernatural. I mean, you might get six fold, ten fold, but to get a hundred fold, more than what you sow is it's supernatural. A hundred more times than what you sow. When he said this, he called out, whoever has ears to hear, let him hear. So Jesus tells the story, and then he calls out. He shouts out. He raises his voice, and he says, whoever has ears, let him hear. Like most people have ears. Matter of fact, I haven't met too many people in my life that don't have ears. So that's, he's speaking to all of us. We all have ears. But the problem is, is not the fact that we have ears, it's the fact that we don't listen. Or when we do listen, we don't listen and get the real meat of what we're supposed to say. So yeah, God, Jesus calls out in a loud voice and he says, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. Another way to say it is that it is, hear this. Like, listen to this. Get this. He's been telling good news. He's been going around telling good news. And then he tells a parable and he says, hear this. Get this. Listen to this. Understand this. Get this. And that's for us as leaders, as pastors, as as farmers, as sowers of seed, as those that proclaim the good news, this is probably even more important for us. Let's hear this. His disciples asked him what the parable meant. And he said, 
to the, he said, the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God has been given to you, but to others I speak in parables, so that though seeing, they may not see. Though hearing, they may not understand. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those along the path are the ones who hear, and then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts, so that they may not believe and be saved. And so those on the rocky ground are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but they have no root. They believe for a while, but in the time of testing, they fall away. It doesn't say if a time of testing comes. It says in the time of testing. Wouldn't it be better if, if some of us were spared from testing? And sometimes we look at other people's lives, we think, they're just not going through what I'm, they don't know my struggles. Like sometimes we can even look at other churches on Instagram and social media and think, that's just not fair. Things just seem to go right for them. But this tells us that all of us go through a time of testing. So let's not be surprised when we have times of testing. But it's what we do in the time of testing that makes the difference. So here's the good news. Time of testing is coming. We have a time of testing in our future. We have times of testing in our past. As a matter of fact, we are having lots of times of testing. And what is a testing? It's testing the good news. It's testing the word of God. It's testing what God has said to us. Now that's true not just for, for what God proclaims in his word, his, his written word, but it's also true for some of the promises that God might have spoken to you and to me as individuals. God speaks to us, and he, he gives us dreams for our future. He gives us dreams for our churches. We believe in God for something. We, some of us, when we went into ministry, when we started the church, we felt God promised us something. And then COVID happened, lockdown. Version one, two, three. And now we hear there's another version. Version four is on the way. Times of testing. In the times of testing, they fall away. Then the seed that fell on the thorns stands for those who hear, but they will go on, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, by riches, by pleasures, and they do not mature. But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart, who hear the word retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. Who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. So here, it's amazing. It tells us that, that the soil is our hearts, the condition of our hearts. And the seed, God sows seed. He, we, he speaks to us. He gives us promises. We read the word of God. But the determining factor of whether or not we're going to receive see fruit, whether or not we're going to see these promises become a reality, whether or not we're going to see God's will manifested in our lives and in our churches is got to do with the condition of our hearts. And that's very similar to Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, that says, above all else, guard your heart for everything we do flows from it. So here's a thought. The only thing standing between us and the future that God has got for us is the condition of our hearts. The only thing standing between you and I and the future that God's got for us is the condition of our hearts. The only thing standing between your church as it currently is and the future that God's got for it is the condition of your church's heart. Because the truth is that churches have a heart. They're alive. And we as leaders shape that. We lead that. It's our responsibility. And so I can't control circumstances. I wish I could. I can't control testing. I can't control when the time of testing comes. I can't control the lies and what's going on in the world. I can't control that. But one thing that I can control is the condition of my heart. My heart is my responsibility. Your heart is your responsibility. And if we can make sure our hearts are healthy, then we will go through. 
then we will survive. And that is not an easy task. It requires constant weeding. Constant, constant weeding. Little thoughts that come in, little worries that come in, little distractions that come in. Reminding ourselves of the promises of God. The only thing standing between us and the future that God has got for us is the condition of our hearts. Our hearts are our responsibility. Let's make sure we have good soil. So what I'm going to share is just some things that, that I, try, I try to do to help me with my heart. These are things that I felt that are helpful. It's not an exhaustive list, but maybe it's helpful to you as you, as you think about, about your life and think about what you're trying to build and to think about what God's promised you as an individual and what you feel God's promised you as a church. These are some things that, that we try to do, that Marinette and I try to do. Let's go and read Luke chapter 4. This is Jesus, and he says, he says, He went to Nazareth where he, he had brought, where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. As was his custom. Gathering together needs to be our custom, as we know. But I'm preaching to the converted here. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Un unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news. There's that word again. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because. I would ask you a question. What is your because? It's probably not even correct English, eh? What is your because? What is your because? What is the reason why you're getting up in the morning? Why are you doing this? Because our because needs to be his because. Is that English? It's probably not. It doesn't make sense. Okay. Our because needs to be his because. Because when our because is anything other than his because, we get really messed up. We lose our mandate, as, as Dina was saying, when we forget why we're here, when we forget what it's all about. And it's so easy, it's so easy to go into survival mode. It's so easy to start worrying about circumstances. When we're struggling, when we're going through times of testing, when, when we feel like, God, what's happening? We look at our families, we look at, at what's happening in this world. It's easy for us to lose hope, and it's so easy for us to lose our because. As a matter of fact, I think one of the first things that we lose is we lose our because. And when churches lose their because, they've lost before they've started. If we can remind ourselves what is our because, why am I here? Why am I doing this? Why as a church do we exist? Why are we? we hear. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because. I'm blessed because. I'm alive because. Marinette always says that purpose is the best alarm clock, and that is so true. It's what gets us up in the morning. It's our reason for existing, our because. What is your because? Maybe in the live stream, what is your because? What is your church's because? Clarify that. Talk about it. Remind ourselves of why we are here. We are here. We are, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed us to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, to set the oppressed free, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. We get to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor that there is good in our future, that there is good in people's future, and that it's all centered in Jesus. Why do we exist? For us as a church, we've framed that into a statement that says, so others may live. That is our because. We exist so others may live, so others may find life, so people's lives may be impacted, so people may know Jesus, so people may encounter him, so that families could be transformed. So that people that are struggling may, 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 may go to heaven. That marriages could be restored. What is our because? Let's center our lives around that. 
And if we are to cultivate, if we are to make sure that our, our hearts are healthy, we need to remind ourselves of our because. I love what Dina said. It's our mandate. It's our mission. It's the reason why we move. Because we can, we must. So we want to make sure our hearts are healthy. Let's keep our because in the front of what we're doing. Hosea verse 6. Hosea chapter 6 verse 3. Now we, we know the prophet Hosea. This is a difficult time. Israelites are in slavery. They had disobeyed God. They had fallen away from God. They were struggling and they were in slavery and they started to cry to God. But Deuteronomy chapter 30 had also gave, given them some promises, given them some promises that even though they'd fall away from God, even though they'd be carried into a distant land, even though they'd be going through very, very difficult times, that if they turned back to the Lord, then God would restore them. That, that it would actually be better than what it was. That, that somehow they would be larger and even more prosperous and even more blessed than what they were during the time of King David and King Solomon. And while they were going through this time of testing, while they were in this foreign land, those promises seemed absolutely impossible. Like, how is it possible that God could gather us together again? How is it possible that God could bring good out of the situation? How is it possible that we could ever be restored? Lord, there is no hope, but yet they believed in the promise of God, and Hosea is reminding the nation about the promises of God in chapter 6, and it is great. And so we're just going to pick up from, from verse 3. It says, let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us press on to acknowledge the Lord. As surely as the sun rises, he will appear again. Let us. Let us. Like what Dina said early on, we are better together. When I, I first got married to my beautiful, amazing, amazing wife, Marinette, you must actually pray for her um, because it's not easy being married to me. But I am changing God is busy in, in, my, in my life, and she is very close to the Lord, and I know this because she loves me, and only God could help her love me. So when we first got married, I took her to the Cedarburg because there was camping, but I had an, a, a motive, a reason why we wanted to go camping in the Cedarburg was because there is these these yellow fish in the upper Olifrance River, and I'm a passionate fly fisherman, and I wanted to go catch a yellow fish on fly. And I knew there was this pool up on the Olifrance River where there were these big yellow fish. And so I said, hey, babe, let's go hike to this pool because I really want to go catch this fish. And she's, yeah, okay, let's go, you know. I mean, she's amazing. So we, we basically walked down from Beaver Lake. If you know the Cedarburg, we walked down to the Olifrance River below. It's a long hike. It's It's hot. And I am just so excited, I'm fixated on going to go and catch these fish that I keep on leaving her behind. And she keeps on saying, can you wait for me? I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And eventually she says to me, she says, Paul, Paul, you're not there until we're both there. <laughs> what do you mean I'm not there until we're both there? No, no, you're not there until we're both there. And the truth is that our because, we can't get there until we're all there. So serving God, building his kingdom, seeing us do what God has called us to do, the goal is not me, the goal is what we do together. It's about God's kingdom advancing. So we're not there until we're all there. My church can't get there until we all get there. It's not about whether my little area of my vineyard expands if the kingdom of God is going backwards. If we are becoming less Christian, if we are becoming less Christian in my lifetime, even though our areas are growing, even though our church seems to be flourishing, but our cities are becoming less Christian, we're not there. We can't get there until we all get there because... We're here, our because is not an individual pursuit. It's not about how well our church is doing or how about well I'm doing. It's about how well are we doing. Is the kingdom of God moving forward in our lifetime? 
And the reality, and this is what scares me, it scares me, is that there are very, 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 very few locations anywhere in the Western world where Christianity is advancing. And that's in our lifetime. That should keep us up at night. Paul, I thought you said it was good news. It's good news because God's with us. Because God's more concerned about this than what we are. We have to take our eyes off our lives and put our eyes on our lives. On what we are doing together. We absolutely are better together and we cannot accomplish what God has put us on earth to accomplish if we keep on focusing on our own little worlds. We are better together. Let's share resources. Let's pray for one another. Let's encourage one another. Let's speak well about one another. Let's have each other's backs. In our church, we try to never speak badly about another church and our team. We don't wanna, I don't want to hear bad reports about, oh, did you hear this happened in this church? No. And somehow we think it's better. Or maybe somebody leaves another church and comes to our church and says, oh, Paul, you're preaching so much better. You know what, that, that other church? Actually, they never say that to me because my preaching is not very good. But, but, you know, people will come and say this and all oh, this and all oh, that. Oh, that pastor did this. You know what our response needs to be and what Marinette and I try to make sure our response always is? Well, we don't know them like that. And, and the people that we know, they're pretty good people. Or maybe they had a really good reason for doing that. Because we want to defend one another. We want to speak well about one another. We want to see every single life-giving church in South Africa flourish. And it's got to start with us in our communities. We need to be praying for one another and celebrating and sharing resources and sharing ideas. We've, maybe you figured out something that's working. Share it. And that's what, we want to, what today is all about. It's what ARC stands for. It's about us doing this together. I'm not there until we're all there. And it says, let us, let us press on. Let us press on to acknowledge the Lord. Let us, let us press on together. And that's got to do with heart health. So we've got to remind ourselves of our because, and we've got to remind ourselves that it's not about us. It's not about me. It's about us being kingdom-minded. And if churches, if we as churches can, re- get, cannot, can, forget, can remind ourselves of our because, and if we as churches can make sure that it's not just about me and my, but it's about us and we, and we're open-handed, we celebrate, and we're cheering each other on, and we're speaking well about each other. Somebody goes to a hard time, we're praying for them. And sometimes we can fall into the trap and we can think, well, that's about ministers' meetings or about fraternals. It's got to be more than gathering. It's got to be a heart attitude. It's got to be a celebration. It's got to be about praying and having a, a healthy heart towards others in our towns and in our cities. Matter of fact, one of the things that we do when we're training young church planters to plant a church and they're going into a new place and they're so excited, they're like, oh, God's put this dream in our hearts and We're going to take the city for Jesus. It's going to be amazing. We're like, absolutely, go for it. But what we tell them is that you're not the best thing. You're just the next thing. Make sure that you're honoring the past, honoring people that have been there before you. You Because we... We're in this together. Let's honor the churches. Let's honor the existing churches there, the people that have been there that have been sowing the seed. Let us press on. And then it says, as surely as the sun rises, he will appear. He will come to us. Not me. He will come to us like the winter rains, like the spring rains that water the earth. A number of years ago, when Marinette and I were still missionaries in, in Zambia, there was a time where she had just given birth to our second son, Nathan, and she was staying in Bloemfontein. All those in Bloemfontein from the Free State, good place. Good place. We love Bloemfontein. Both my boys were born there. So she stayed there while 
Well, well, the, well, Nathan was putting on a little bit of weight because with the area that we're living in, West Zambia, high malaria area, and wanted them to be at least five kgs. Um, they were close to five kgs when they were born. I mean, and um, but she stayed there. And then I went back, and then she was going to come up to Zambia once once Nathan was a little bit a little bit bigger because of malaria. And so I was driving. I was driving back, and it was in flood season. And this is before the road from Katima to Mongu was completed. And so there was this dirt track. And you drive on the, west, on the western side of the Zambezi and then cross over this pontoon um, close to a place called Sananga and then get on to Mongu. And that dirt track would probably take about, about five hours to get to the pontoon. And then you'd cross the pontoon and carry on. Anyway, I left Katima driving north um, in, in the be- one of the best cars ever made, um, Toyota Land Cruiser, amazing, amazing vehicle, and driving, and there was no ways of knowing that the pontoon was working or not, but you're hoping that it is working. And so it got there, and the pontoon wasn't working. But I had goals. I mean, I had plans. I wanted to get to Mongo. There were things I wanted to do, and I got to the pontoon, and the pontoon was broken. So I had to turn around, drive five hours back, and then cross the Zambies in another location, and then do a 14-hour trip through the forest on the single jeep track and eventually get to Mongu the long way. So it was a... It was a time of testing, let's just say that. It was a time of testing. And you get to the point and you're like... "Mm, uh, uh." Put on some worship music. And I'm driving, and I'm driving all the way back. And now, I mean, I started off in the morning, but by the time I actually get back to where I started from, the sun was going down, and now I've got to go through the dirt track, and I'm thinking, okay, well, I'm just going to drive through the night. I've got these things I need to do. There's plans. I'm running behind schedule here. And I start driving on this dirt track, and then, because it's rainy season, there's some places where there was a lot of water. And so I'm driving through the water, and not the end of the world, I'm drive through this one section, the sun's going down, and then it's dark, and I'm driving, the light's on, and worship music going, and I'm, hey, this is amazing, great. And then I drive through this one section of water, and then as I go through the water, the lights on my vehicle go out. And this is this one section of road where there are, I mean, it's just, it's just forest, there's no people or anything. So I'm not, I'm not, it's okay, okay, I'm not... I can fix things, you know. So I get my little head torch out, got my Leatherman, and I open the bonnet, and I'm thinking maybe it's a fuse, maybe it's something like that. I'm looking, and I'm checking, and checking maybe what can I do to get the lights back on again. And I eventually realized, no, it's actually this one particular fuse that's gone, and I don't have a replacement part. So you know what I did? Got my little tent out, put it out on the side of the road, got my sleeping bag out, climbed into my tent, and I went to sleep, and I went to sleep really, really well. And you know why I slept really well? Because I knew, even though it was dark, even though I couldn't drive, even though I didn't know where I I couldn't carry on at that particular moment, I knew that in the morning, the sun would come up. In the morning, I'd be able to see clearly. In the morning, I'd be able to carry on. And I love this. As surely as the sun rises, he will appear. And that's true about the promises of God. They could say this because they knew the promises of God. And when we know the promises of God, they are like knowing that the sun is going to rise. It doesn't matter how dark it might seem right now. It doesn't matter how hopeless it might seem right now. It doesn't matter how frustrated we might be right now in the current series of our current reality. Maybe you had plans. Maybe you wanted to be further on in your journey than where you are right now. Maybe you feel like this whole thing has slowed you down and you're frustrated and you're like, ah, why is this happening? It's okay because we know the promises of God. We know our because. We know what God has told us about our future. We know what God wants to do with our churches. And if we know what God has told us about our future, if we know what God wants to do in our communities, We know what God's will is. We know our because. We know our why. We know that we're in this together. Even in this season, even though we might be frustrated, guess what? The sun is going to rise in the morning. Seasons are going to change. The lights are going to come on. We're going to see clearly, and we're going to be able to carry on in our vision. So let's not get freaked out in the darkness. 
Let's not quit in the darkness. Let's not do something that we shouldn't do in the darkness. Even though you can't see right now, even though you're frustrated, even though you can't fix it right now. And I think that's one of the most frustrating things for many of us is that we can't fix this. I can't fix it. I can't change it. I feel like there's nothing I can do. Felt like that? Is that just me? I don't think so. I think that's all of us. Everything we're doing. <sighs> put, the worship, put the worship music on. <coughs> Sleep well. Rest up. Because the sun's going to come up in the morning. The sun is going to come up in the morning. And we're going to be able to carry on. Because God has given us promises. We know who he is. We know who we are because of him. We know that he's with us. And we can hold on to his promises. Amen.